Uh, we'll go ahead and get our meeting kicked off with uh, some good things that are happening in our community. For those of you who would like to grab an agenda and follow along, they are here on the podium. Uh, help yourself and, and you can follow along with us. And uh, again, it's good to see everyone today. We're going to start our meeting um, with the, uh, a couple of proclamations. I do want to let everyone know that this is our workshop meeting. And we, while we do have a lot to discuss, we will not be voting on items tonight. The first meeting of the month each month is the workshop where we discuss all of the items on the agenda that we'll be voting for in our third Monday of the month meeting, what I call the regular council meeting. So don't be surprised if you don't see us voting or anything like that. That is not this workshop, um, not this meeting as the workshop meeting. But I start the, uh, the meeting off with a couple of proclamations. And first is a proclamation de declaring Garden Week in Georgia. And I'd like to call on our friend Miss Connie Ewing. You have put together a beautiful display. If you'd like to share some information and then we'll read the proclamation and just share with us what's going on with our garden clubs who are such great partners so with us. Terry Gray is here. Hello Terry. Now can we go over to our Sure, board, absolutely. Five whatever five minutes, whatever you'd like. Party. Yeah. All right. Hey Connie, the... we're going to give you the microphone so everybody can, right. can hear you. So hold on one second. Thank you. Terry and I are representing the Tifton Council of Garden Clubs. We have three clubs in Tifton. We have one of our other presidents here, Karen Smith. She's with Trillium. I'm with Magnolia Garden Club, and Terry's with Camellia. Um, we have a board here. You can just be my banner white and kind of show them a little <laughs> bit. We have what we're doing, Garden Week in Georgia. And it's been proclaimed by Governor Kemp, Brian Kemp. We have a proclamation from him. But that's important is getting our mayor, Julie Smith, from Tifton. Because I almost said Garden Week in Georgia and Tifton, and next year I might do that, because we'll be around two more years. That's right. But um, we have things that our clubs have done. We, um, this week, this few weeks ago, they, um, Camellia, you want to tell about your club? Our Camellia, we, we did several arrangements, and we delivered them to the hospital, to the front desk help, and, and different stations around the hospital, just to, to brighten up people's days, because flowers are, are just cheerful for any mood or any time, and, we just want to promote happiness through our flowers and things like that. And also, they did 40 tables. Now, I know you know we do a lot of decorating, but that's not all we do. We do plantings, we um, do landscape designs, we work, um, do schools, we plant trees there. But they did 40 tables for the Older American Luncheon, and they also planted some red buds at the fire station. And we've talked to Bruce Willis and, and uh, Bruce, Bruce Green. Green. <laughs> Bruce Willis, oh my. <laughs> well, we have some heavy connections. <laughs> we do. But we want to get more involved with Tifton. And we talked about the dog park, which is so um, exciting. My girls in, in Alpharetta and Johns Creek could not believe that we actually have a dog park because they are so popular up there. I mean, just dogs on weekends, they let them walk and run. So um, she was very happy about that. Um, we also had a company that brought us some trees from Dr. Wayne Hanna. He's a uh, professor at ABAC, uh, ABAC but anyway, he, he has developed patented Christmas, not Christmas, citrus trees. And we had an order for those, and we planted those on Arbor Day, which is also during Garden Week. Let's see, over here at the convention center, the conference center, we have a John Hunt Memorial Garden. And a few years ago, we, our garden club, Magnolia, did this one. And we planted native plants there. And it's on view outside in the courtyard from all the glass. And so we have refurbished that during our garden week. That's an ongoing project. And then Trillium Garden Club also planted some trees during this garden week. And I said, we love flowers. Um, I do a lot of roses. And a lot of, I've done school projects and proms and everything like that. But these are for our county commissioners and city commissioners and any lucky people or that want one. You can come get these. They um, are from the Council of Garden Clubs, just celebrating Garden Week. And they can't grow on these plants, these containers all the time, but they're in patience and marigolds and calancho. So you're more than welcome, but they first go to you and your staff. But we thank you so much and um, hope you'll see more of us in the paper. And if we, anything we can do to help you out, we would love to. And do Julie, that one thing about garden clubs, we're not just about helping the community. We're about 
um, preserving our past, preservation, conservation, and education on how we can all make this environment better for everyone. So, and we've just um, had a joint venture with Abraham Baldwin College. We donated our building to them and the grounds and the Fullwood Garden Center. So we've done a lot of good things this year and it will allow us to be able to serve our community better instead of worrying about keeping up a facility and maintaining it and they're just, it's gonna be a great partner. And you know, we declared that a landmark site a couple of years ago, so it, it is a good partnership and that's what this is all about. Do you mind leaving your display with us? Okay, because we'd like to display that in City Hall, yes, in the lobby. And she would be so proud of me. She taught fifth grade, Lois Purser, and I mean, I had to print until it was perfect. She would be so proud that she I, would. She would, if you only knew her. So anyway, this is what my creation of what Garden Club is. And I mean, this tells how old I am. I've been in Garden Club 45 years. So I'm up there with some of the older ones. So, so. you started at six when you were six years old. <laughs> yes, yeah, six old. years old and been for, uh, that's, that's amazing. Your perseverance is awesome. <laughs> I said, maybe I will make it to 50 years of being married, because we've been married, you know, 46 now, and I've been gardening for the same number of years. So I'm going to have a celebration for my 50th wedding anniversary and garden club work. That'll be wonderful. Well, listen, we are so appreciative of all the work that our garden clubs do, and I think sometimes it goes unrecognized. We see the contributions that you've made, and we don't know who did that. Yeah, I know you've been great partners with downtown, like you said, with the conference center, with the chamber of commerce, our school system, so many people. And so it's, it's just a real honor for us as the city of Tifton to proclaim Garden Week, like you said, not only in Georgia that our governor did, but in Tifton. Uh, so we're just thrilled to this. So let me read the proclamation very quickly. And, um, and we just thank you so much for all that you do. Whereas gardeners have a passion for nurturing the beauty and resources of the earth through the planting of seeds, the care of all plants, and the harvesting of the riches of their efforts, and whereas gardeners seek to add beauty, splendor, fragrance, and nutrition to our lives through the growing of herbs, vegetables, foliage, and flowers, and whereas gardeners work to preserve our country's traditional spirit of independence and initiative through innovation and hard work, and whereas gardeners advocate the importance of all creatures, large and small, that share our world and their roles in a balanced and productive ecology, and whereas gardening furnished a challenging and productive activity for many citizens or for those just learning, as well as those who have years and years of experience, and whereas gardening promotes a healthy lifestyle that lasts a lifetime, helps reduce stress from other areas of life, teaches that rewards come from diligent efforts, and whereas gardening enables members of the garden clubs across Georgia and the nation to serve others in the communities in which they reside and work. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in an effort to acknowledge the importance of gardening and the numerous contributions of gardeners that I, Julie Smith, Mayor of the City of Tifton, hereby designate the, this week as Georgia week, excuse me, as Garden Week in Georgia, specifically Tifton, Georgia. So thank you so much. I appreciate all the work y'all do. And we it's are just not a closed group. So if anyone would like to join a garden club, you can contact Julie or some of us. We're going to work more on that. We would love to have some new members. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, thank you for our, our beautiful gifts. And we're going to display this in the lobby so that all of our citizens that come in, and lots of them come in every day, can see this. And we just appreciate all the work that you've done. So let's give these folks a, a round of applause. <laughs> We have another proclamation. Did I turn that off? We have another proclamation. This is declaring uh, Mental Health Month. So I would like to invite all of our mental health professionals to come and join me over here. We even got the judge in here and everything. Wow, this is, I'm impressed. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> this is awesome. 
we just, again, appreciate the work. Of, we've got so many great folks in this community and so many people who work hard and face challenges and do all that they can to make our community a better place to live and work. And of you certainly do that. I know that sometimes mental health can have a stigma that's unfortunate. Um, and we want to do everything we can to remove that stigma and encourage people to come in and get the help that they need. So, um, so thank you on behalf of the, the our, not only our city council, but the city of Tifton and all of our citizens. And I would like to read this proclamation, recognizing May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month. And our proclamation says, whereas one in four adults experience a mental health disorder in a given year, and whereas one in 17 adults lives with a serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia, major depression, or bipolar disorder, and whereas approximately one in dental or emotional disorder, and whereas mental illnesses are biological illnesses affecting the function of the ruling organ of the body, the human brain, and whereas people living with mental illnesses can recover if given the necessary services and support in their communities, and whereas fewer than one-third of adults and one-half of children with a diagnosable mental disorder receive mental health services in a given year, and whereas many people who would benefit from mental health services avoid seeking help due to stigma and fear of discrimination, and whereas greater public awareness about mental illnesses can change negative attitudes towards people with mental illnesses. Now, therefore, I, Julie Smith, Mayor of the City of Tifton, on behalf of the Tifton City Council, do hereby proclaim May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month for the City of Tifton. I also call upon our citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools to commit to increasing awareness and the understanding of mental illnesses to fight that stigma and discrimination and to promote appropriate and accessible services for all people living with mental illness. And it's given under my hand and seal of the city of Tifton this sixth day of May uh, 2019. So thank you so much for the work that you do. Would you like to share some information, take a few minutes, and talk about some of the programs? Hi, I'm Jennifer Dunn. I'm with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities from the state of Georgia. Uh, we serve the 24 counties of South Georgia, and uh, um, I'm in the 24 counties down here, and Tifton is one of our, our areas that we cover, and we brought with us legacy behavioral health services. We've got a local NAMI group here. We've got Judge Benson and Michelle from the OASIS uh, Center, so I'd just like to say thank you so much. Am I missing anybody? I think that's it. Um, oh, and yeah. thank you. I am missing somebody. <laughs> I'm missing Amanda with um, with Tiff Regional and Sylvia Barr. And so we just have a complementary of services. Um, we do a lot of trainings. We do a lot of mental health awareness trainings. Um, we have uh, CIT trainings for law enforcement. As a matter of fact, we have a class coming up here in Tifton in about uh, well May 20th through May 24th. So any of the folks in the room uh, in law enforcement is interested in that, please let me know. Um, we just uh, are really fortunate to have a city that is very appreciative of what we're doing, and we just want to thank you. I don't have plants, but I do have <laughs> mental health awareness pins that I'm going to okay. give to you guys to have. And she wore green, so she must have known that that's what you do, you wear green. Um, and uh, I just want to make sure that you know that we're available. We have lots of um, our crisis and access cards, meaning anybody can call our crisis and access line to get help 24-7, 365, and talk to some... I'm, I have a whole stack for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> There's lots that come out of the purse. Um, is, is there anything that anybody else wants to say on behalf of Legacy, TIFF Regional, NAMI, Judge Benson, anything? Yes, and if you need more, I just ordered 3,000 more. I have them in English and in Spanish. Um, I have another 500 in, probably in my car, but I will leave them for anybody. And I also have my business card if anybody has any questions. 
So thank you. I know many times, I know some of the other councils have said that, you know, we get, sometimes we get strange calls in our role right. as council, and I've had people contact me and say, I have this situation. What do I do? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And so to be able to connect them with the right resources is really important. So who should I um, share this proclamation with? Do you want to take that? Me and Jean, I'm going I'm to okay. give it to Janetta. Okay. And, um, Thank you very, very thank much. You. We well, appreciate thank it. Thank you for all the work that you do, and, yeah. and I know that sometimes it, it is also unrewarded and can be very challenging and, and um, can be very difficult. Right. But we as a city truly do appreciate and we'll do everything we can to help you in that effort. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful, and thank you. And this is from John, oh, and it's our mommy chapter here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect, thank you. We have good partners in this community, and it's always um, a privilege to be able to recognize and acknowledge the work that goes on in this community, and much of it just behind the scenes, and, and people trying to make life better in, uh, in every way that they can. Um, I'm going to deviate just a smidge on our um, on our agenda and uh, call on Pete. You have some uh, information you'd like to share with us before we get into the meat of the matter. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, Council, I just I wanted to congratulate and thank uh, a few individuals. <clears throat> and let me too much of Jonathan. Start by telling you a, a milestone that some one of our employees have reached, and uh, I just I'd like for him to come forward. Uh, and if he wants to say something, fine. If he doesn't, that's fine too, but we're going to recognize you uh, because Captain Steve Hyman. <laughs> he woke up. Look at that. <laughs> Turn it down there, Jonathan. I think it's like, my mic. It's like really loud. Or Put something. your phone away from me. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Um, Captain Hyman um, has been with the Tifton Police Department 36 years. And I wanted to share that with uh, the council, with the public, uh, and that is that is a milestone that uh, most managers don't get to describe what that means for an organization to have someone of your experience and some of your talent to spend the majority of their life within the police department for 36 years. So, on behalf of my office, behalf of the city of Tifton, and I'm sure mayor and council and the public. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you for your service, and hopefully uh, we'll be talking about you at 40 years of service. How about that? Is that deal? Thank you. Good. Just I want to do an introduction. So before you leave, please, um, if Manny, if you'll come, come to the front with Captain Hyman, please. Um, Mayor Council, I wanted to introduce Emmanuel. He goes by Manny Santillan. <laughs> he is going to be our new parking officer for downtown. And Manny uh, is brand new to the police um, field, and he is going to be going to the academy in how many months? July. So uh, in the interim, uh, this is going to be a, a great uh, testing for him. And he's going to be in the, in the buggy. He's going to be official. Obviously, he can't carry a gun and beans and bullets yet, but he's going to be helping the downtown merchants with parking because it's something we have been lacking on. And uh, again, we're not here to, you know, give people tickets all the time. We're here to educate and we're here to, to have customer service with our police department. So, Manny, this is a great way because the downtown and, and what we do downtown and the merchants and the people, what they want to do is just here. Uh, how we could help, number one, and number two is maybe share with the rules and, and uh, help with parking 
uh, enforcement. It's going to give you a great lead into the academy, and when you put that suit on, you're going to be one step ahead. So uh, congratulations, and I wanted to introduce him to, to you all. So welcome aboard. Thank you, Manny. It's Thank nice you. to meet you. Glad to have you with us. We appreciate it. All right, thank you, Manny. You can be seated. Um, I'm going to stay with the police department just for a minute. And um, I've been thinking about this group uh, for a while, and I'd like to ask them to, to come forward uh, if, if I can, because I, I want to talk about them uh, exclusively. So if I could have uh, Danny Ray, Lieutenant D. Ray, if you could just, just stand right there. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, Jacob Teeter, who's the sergeant. Chad Wentworth, who's the detective. Ali Gann, who was just promoted to detective, and then Joey Woods is a detective also. You know, we're, I think it's safe to say we're proud of the entire PD and uh, what they do and how they do it. But this group of officers is, is pretty special and unique to the department. Uh, you see their work on um, TV, detectives and Miami Vice and criminal minds and criminal this and how they do their thing and it's pretty cool and everybody loves to watch that but you know that may be a little true for what they do and how they do it but uh, real realistically their everyday life and what they do for the city of Tiffin is much more special than obviously a skit uh, or on a movie movie set they need to be commended as individuals and as a team for the work and often you do not hear about them so I witnessed uh, some of their work. Uh, I can tell you that there's, there's some top-notch interrogation skills in this group. I can tell you there's better tech skills than most seniors and juniors in school. They think they, they're good with the phone. You should see one of, one of that, that group's uh, and their talents on how to dig things out of cell phones and the technology capabilities. Interviewing skills, putting cases together, doing solid leads, and then solving cases obviously is what they're tasked with, and they do that. But lately, when we, and we have shootings, and we have robberies, et cetera, et cetera, that plague every city that we have to deal with. Guess who are the first ones to be on the scene and take it to, to the next level? And it's just this group. So, <clears throat> As these things happen, and I, you know, I put messages out to you, uh, I can tell you that the, the, the way they do it, um, the solve rate is great. Um, the, where, where the reality is they have 40 cases probably a piece. Joey and I had a conversation last week, and the workload is, is pretty tough. Their task is to, is to get it done and make sure they solve it, put all the pieces together. And I can tell you that they do that. But when, when things impact our community, when things or families want answers or they have to go to court and testify, they've got to put all that together. And I can tell you from firsthand witness, uh, they're just an incredible team. And I wanted you to hear um, what Chief goes through and what Jaime and what they hear all, all the time. I get little bits and pieces and I get to watch from the outside. But I can tell you, uh, you guys are awesome. And I wanted to thank you. And I wanted to describe to you, because you don't see them as a group, and that's something that I wanted to do, so you could kind of get a really good picture of, of who's doing this stuff for us in the city of Tifton, uh, front lines, and when it really counts. So with that, Chief, thank you for, for uh, your leadership. CID, thank you for what you do and how you do it. And that's all I wanted to say about that. Thank you very much. We very much do. Um, can't thank you enough, and you represent Tifton well, and you serve this community well, and for that we're very, very thankful. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
And then real quickly, because I know we've got a lot, lot ahead of us, but I want to take this opportunity. Um, Tommy, if you'll come on forward, and Brian. They're going to quickly describe, because I know you've heard little bits and pieces about it, but the fire department, uh, a special group, and I think they're all here. Is that right? Oh, no, we missed the Okay. Uh, and I'll let you tell the story, but I wanted to share a quick video with you and let uh, Captain Garen tell you about what we competed in, um, in Pensacola. And I will tell you that uh, they went over there for the night. They, they raised all the money themselves, and they competed on a, I would say, a, it's a national level? It's a, yes, it is. Okay. So you want to give a quick rundown and we'll show the video. Uh, we, uh, April 12th and 13th, we went to the Tesco Fire Challenge. And uh, during that challenge, um, there's five different team events, what we entered in. There's single events that you can do to all. It uh, uh, starts off with forceful entry, which was Brian, which we break through the door and stuff. We have a door here in the This is a volunteer thing. You guys have been working hard. This is something that's, that's out of out of character. Again, you guys volunteer for this. It's, it's high speed stuff. You don't see many fire departments doing it. <laughs> so I want to share the video, and, and we'll see. Uh, Wes said he's going to train with you if you can do it around yeah. here. So we're going to get some. Um, right. Those world record holders. I mean, the ones that want. I mean, some of the ones that want it and stuff. Wow. I mean, that was All right. Let's see the video real quick, and we got to move on. Come on, Brian. There you go, Brian. Come on. Come on, buddy. There you go. There you go. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Kick it, Jimmy. Come on, baby. Pull it. Pull it. Pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy.
Well, look, work, work for you. Yeah. Congratulations, y'all. Thank you for doing that, and uh, I can't wait for the next time. So I want yes. to share with that. Awesome. Thank you. Proud of our, our public service folks, our first responders, City of Tipton Police Department, City of Tipton Fire Department. Make us proud every day. All right, Pete, did you have anything else you yes. needed to review? Okay. We'll get back on the, uh, the regular order of business with our agenda. Um, the next item on our um, agenda is under old business, and it's the discussion of the Urban Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tifton. And if you'll recall, uh, we were all tasked with providing a list of names that we wanted to recommend for the um, agency members to serve on that board we'll be forming. Uh, Pete, did you have anything you needed to add, or Bruce, if, if there's anything? Well, I don't. We're, okay. we're talking about the, the members themselves, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that is going to be... Um, just for the city of Tifton area. And so we have um, it's seven members, so we have to come up with seven individuals that are inside. So I think uh, resolution-wise and structure-wise, the only thing we're really left to do is put the, the members of the agency together. And <coughs> if we could have this by June, uh, really we'll meet our goal and we could take, take the plan and, and go to the next step with Matt Wilson. But, we need to formalize this and we need to have this board in place. So we really need some some names to serve on that. So okay. if you have any, I'll write them down and we'll be glad to contact them. Okay. And um, the, the, the board members, uh, based on the, and Bruce shared with me the, um, the Georgia Code, they do need to be residents of the city of Tifton. I know that was some discussion earlier. We weren't sure about that, but it looks like they do. Rob, you've seen this and they concur do. with that. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, what probably would be the best thing to do is uh, if y'all want to just write your names down and we can turn those into Pete this afternoon and um, so before you leave this afternoon, if you'll just share your names. Some of the names I have, I'm not sure if they're city residents or not, but I know through checking, you know, we'll, we'll see. Some of our members that we want to serve may not be able to serve once they're contacted, so um, don't submit just one name, submit several names. And um, for this type of board, it's helpful to have people who one, live in the neighborhood and in the area, that's that's critically important. I know Johnny and I have talked about that. Also to have people who are willing to commit the time and the effort and energy because they're really starting something from scratch. And so it's going to be somewhat challenging, but I think very exciting at the same time. So to have people who are versed in um, banking practices or real estate practices or um, neighborhood improvement, those types of things, I think are going to be real important to create a good diverse board who will work well and and uh, and, and take this uh, urban redevelopment agency to the next level? So, any comments or questions as we move on through through that process? Good. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, service delivery status update, and I think Rob, you've got some information for us. Yeah, I do. Uh, I think that uh, as we had talked about maybe a month or so ago. Uh, you know, City Council and the County Commission has basically authorized myself and the County Attorney Tony Ryle to uh, engage in some discussions about trying to uh, get our service delivery strategy to DCA by the end of June. Uh, Tony Ryle and myself have met on uh, three or four occasions. We are uh, working through the service delivery forms. Uh, as you know, Andy Welsh has been assisting us as well, you know, up in Atlanta with the service delivery. I just talked with Tony uh, about 5.20 this afternoon. We're going to meet again tomorrow. So uh, I think everything's coming together, making a lot of progress. I know we're coming up on the deadline, but, uh, but we have made significant progress, and I don't really foresee any issues okay. about you know, getting that resolved. This, the county commission meets tomorrow for their workshop. Is that correct? Yeah, they do. And, and one of the things when I met with uh, Tony last week, is that we wanted to uh, be able to update both City Council and the County Commission about where we were. Uh, I think Tony will be doing that tomorrow night with the County Commission. Okay. So, so they've got that on their agenda then to, to discuss? I'm not sure if they have it on the agenda or not, okay. but I know we discussed that they were going to address okay. it with, with them. But anyway, uh, we have been working diligently. The conversation has gone well, and uh, I believe we're going to be able to resolve these issues, hopefully in the very near future, so we're not be, have to be facing any great deadlines. Let me ask you just a what if question. What if it's not on the agenda and it's not discussed tomorrow? What, what's, what's next? Well, that's not, I, that is not any great consequence. Okay. The only reason that, that, we, that we had it on our agenda tonight, just so I could give you all an update about where okay. we were, what progress we've made, 
and that was really going to be Tony's purpose tomorrow night. Right. Uh, but really, uh, we're you know working through the forms, and we're really close to where we need to be. Okay. And so, I mean, whether or not they have that on their agenda or not, I don't I don't see any great consequence. That's not going to do anything. Not going to slow anything up. Not going to okay. slow anything up. Do you think you need to attend that meeting in case they have any questions or anything, or do you? What's your thought on that? Any? I'd be glad to go if you want to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that Wes just woke up on that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That gave his attention. No, I, I, I don't think so. Okay. I, I really don't. He doesn't think so. Okay. <laughs> well, I just, I just don't want this to, I would just place a lot of faith there, and I just want to make sure that we stay on task. Sure, I understand that, and, and believe me, we have stayed on task. Yeah, okay. Okay, good deal. All right, thank you. Any questions, comments on the, on the update? So what, so the, what is the plan at this point would be then to just to extend um, the service delivery? Basically where our discussions have gone is, you know, some services uh, we don't really have disputes about. Right. And as far as the duration of those uh, service delivery issues, you know, can extend, you know, for a period of time. Right. Uh, naturally, we have issues with water and sewer. Right. Uh, that would probably be extended for another year. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some other uh, services that we may only want to extend for a year give us the opportunity to discuss those. Now, whether or not um, they all terminate in the year, or whether or not the ones that we are not in dispute may carry on longer, uh, that's an issue that uh, I've been talking with Andy Welch about. Uh, that issue really is whether or not DCA will have a problem with having some contracts, you know, services sure. in a year versus some terminate in 10 years. Right. So that's that's one of the issues that, that, uh, that Tony and I will actually be talking about tomorrow. Okay, good. But by, the, by extending, at least for the immediate term or the short term, that does get us in compliance with Department of Community Affairs with their requirements for the Well, basically what you're doing, you're, yeah. and you're saying this is our service delivery strategy, and this agreement ends in a year. Right. So it's not really like you're extending it. You're saying this is the strategy, mm -hmm. but this strategy ends in a year. Right. And then, you, that, of course, that just means that you're going to have to have to resolve you know, yeah. in a year. Right. So as I said, I think that... You know, the the few services that we have issues with, you know, certainly want to determine those within a year. Yeah. Uh, give us a chance to work through those issues. Okay. I just want to make sure that we are compliant with DCA since we have this community development block grant for the urban redevelopment area with the you know that partnership on the youth center for right. South Tifton. And actually, Tony suggests I think it's a good idea that he and I just get DCA on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And make sure that you know what our plan is going forward is going to. Uh, not give them any heartburn. Perfect. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, would you mind after y'all have that um, discussion um, tomorrow uh, with further discussion and then maybe um, once he submits his information to the commission, could you maybe follow up with an email or um, sure. just to let us know how that went? I, I just be glad to. Just anxious to make sure that's moving anxious, forward. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you. Any questions of Rob on the service delivery? Everybody good? Anything that you need to add? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We are under new business now, and uh, we'll call on Jeff West and Adam Cobb to review the bids that have been received for the water plant backup generators. Gentlemen. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as y'all remember, last year we had a hurricane come through town, and we lost power to every well we had in town, and uh, even resulted in a boil water issue for water. Um, at that time, we went out for bids for generators at three of our sites. We picked out three that will handle the whole system in case of something happening like that again. Um, we got three bids back and the uh, we're recommending to go with the low bid at ATS Electrical Enterprises for $334,635. And I'll answer any questions y'all have about it. If there had not been the uh, hype break we would not have lost we wouldn't have lost all pressure we would have been close but we have never had a situation where we lost power to the entire town that we did not have pumps running at least at one well because we had that category one hurricane come through yes or whatever it was yes. I, I mean i guess 
I don't thought there was enough redundancy built into the system <clears throat> that we really didn't have to spend three hundred something thousand dollars on some generators in this perfect storm that happened. I mean, all those factors had to come together for us to have any issue at all. And I just question whether spending that money in something that that just without that pipe we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have lost the pressure. Yeah, it's a delicate balance, you know, and we, we went through times the last really two years and <coughs> learned a whole lot. And I think where we have the most vulnerability <coughs> is the fire protection. Uh, and if there's a storm, let's just say I'm, the storm comes through and we have fire on the, the other side of town where we do lose pressure fast and uh, we can't make up for it. it. It just it puts us in a real vulnerable position. So we did have some budgeted money. This was... Um, really money set aside for this particular purpose but what this allows us to do is not only we'll never have to question uh, the, the tank and the hospital again because this will always be a, uh, the biggest uh, producers like the bass plant it'll never uh, obviously will go to second power if anything should ever happen so storm fire electrical anything that would happen our system which is a pretty massive system if you really think about it we will never have a problem before. The redundancy, you're 100% correct. And if we put uh, generators every well, that'd be overkill. Uh, but we only have two really in place that are kind of small at this particular point. And I couldn't sit here to tell you what we went through as a community. I probably wouldn't feel comfortable if we didn't take a couple of steps forward and have that locked in for years to come. And realistically, we'll never have to worry about this again. Yeah. This was the reason that all the restaurants were on the advisory yes. and had to close and right. everything. I was, so. I was going to say that. Yeah. In fact, a lot of businesses are in town. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the pipe burst. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. yeah. But, but still, I mean, I, we, oh, I realize it, but let's, let's storms be, are, are more frequent yeah. these days, it seems. I understand, but it wasn't a storm. But yeah. it, even if that hadn't happened, we still would have been down to about 24, 25 PSI, and that's not enough to put out fires and anything else we would have. Fire's a different story. I, I agree with you, but we don't want to get, I mean, we, you know, how and, many generators are battling this? This would be relation, three. Public yeah. relations before of what caused it, and it was the yeah. pipe. Oh, yeah, not, I see. Yeah, you're that's right. That's all I'm trying to do. Three sides, so I think. The bass plant will eight and will six. Six. Three and six. Where, where are those locations? Yeah. Where's the bass plant's right here. Well, right over there behind the office. One twenty-five north. Bass plant. Yes. So he, it pretty, pretty much took care of, or take care of all the, the restaurants in this in that area. Yes, Because when it happened, you know, only one restaurant was open. That was uh, Waffle House. So they never closed. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were the only ones that had a written plan. Yeah, they had one. Yeah, they had one. But this will this will really and that's a very good book. Both you make excellent points, but we'll be covered on the south side of town. Yes. Backup generators for water because right. we have residents and yes. industry here. We have restaurants, commercial residents up, yeah. up on top. Yeah. This realistically will, will set us up for no fail. And I know it's a lot of money, but I, I so think we had the hundred thousand dollars per Location. Yes. I was. I remember uh, talking about the um, possibility of a, a portable, about you know, portable trend. Uh, yes, sir. Um, we <coughs> possibly look at some portables, but you, the uh, reaction time and getting these actually hooked up, their switch gears and everything to actually get them hooked up, it's much better to have an auto generator. Power goes out, it comes on. Even if we have a thunderstorm comes through, it just affects one, one of those three. The generator will come on right then, and we we won't even lose the least little bit of pressure. That's very important around the hospital area and all too. This will pick up on our our SCADA and automatically read if we have issues with the wells or anything. That power gets terminated for any reason. These guys will get a notice, so we are on alert, you know, by cell phone. And this is it's good high tech stuff. Where I think personally we need to be with this type of system. And every, every you all make great points and. The 12-inch water main, will it happen again? Probably. Hopefully not during storm. Uh, last question. Um, if, let's just say, one of the generators goes down, will the other two be able to keep the system going? Yes. 
And, and we do have one portable generator that we could pull to one of the other sites. And if we saw a hurricane coming through, we're going to have it sitting at another site anyway. We're going to have backup. <laughs> and until these get here, if there's a hurricane coming, we're going to have four sitting right here That's rented. True. That's true. If everything generators go out and everything else, we'll just have no, things no, get no, buses no. and Let's start no, no. chucking people out. If all that happens, just <laughs> close up shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great solid plan. I it's think it's game over for, for our system. <laughs> I think it's a great, great way yeah. to go. Well, you know, if we had been through all that and didn't learn from it, we would have been backing up. So thank you for uh, for this. Any yes, other sir. questions or comments? No. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. All right, Jeff, you want to go ahead and talk about the uh, review of the bids received for the 2019 LMIG resurfacing contract? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as y'all remember, uh, back earlier last year, we come to you with a list of streets that we wanted to uh, submit for paving. Um, we got those to uh, DOT, and they come back with uh, $215,364 in the LMIG grant for us. We actually bid it out. And uh, we had four really good bids. Um, that we uh, accepted. Um, and Reeves Construction come in at low bid 573-869-58. Our original estimate on this when we came to you was 629,425. So we did come in under budget. Um, and the uh, remainder of the funding is set to come out as plus to ensure we pave all of these roads. It's a big bulk for y'all and I think it's very aggressive. Mm -hmm. So when we start this, this will be another great, great avenue for paving. I do want to um, commend Adam and Jeff. Uh, we are gonna be replacing two sets of water lines before the new asphalt goes down. Uh, absolutely critical. Chestnut is one and uh, branch, branch is another. Uh, very old and bad infrastructure of the water. So we're replacing that before the Asphalt goes down. So. And the one on the chestnut also will be improving fire protection there because it's just a two inch line that runs almost three blocks and no fire hydrants or anything on this road. And we're continuously fixing this two inch line because it's old galvanized and it just gets pinholes in it. And we have patch after patch up down the road. You really think about that chestnut. It's a, it's a heavily populated street, three yeah. blocks now. How many houses? I could probably guess. Two inch water line that feeds that whole street. Think about that. Yeah. And then, you know, put 40 years on top of that. Uh, that's, um, that's a small waterway. Going yeah, and as Jeff said, we have leaks all the time over there, too, all the time. Well, when, and I know this is <coughs> way above my pay grade. What can, kind of pipe? I've always heard that something with the soil is acidic and... Galvanized is bad yeah. in yeah. soils like that. Uh, most time it's the interior of the pipe on a water line. Uh, usually storm drain pipe that has been done with galvanized the bottom will eat out in five to ten years. It's supposed to have a 25 year lifespan, but the soils here, if you put it in the ground, it's only going to last five to ten. And I think maybe that's what you had heard, but the water lines, it's usually the inside, all the scale and all gets on the side. And uh, we're going to make sure when we dig this one up, I want to cut a piece out of it. I bet you that two inch water line, there's not much bigger area than that pin right there going through it right now. It's so old. Wash them clothes and take a shower. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. The other thing, while we're talking about El Elmer, I wanted to share. I passed a memo out. We just reserved, received word from GDOT that, um, that the department has approved the city's application for additional Elmer funds uh, for our safety action plan. And this is what, what Jeff and Adam brought forward about the striping. So uh, we did get the grant, $54,000. So it's, that's great. I appreciate the work. Thank you. Uh, this is this is big time for us. And yeah, so restriping yellow lines, center lines, et cetera, on the a pavement that is already there that it's not very visible. And, and that, we approve those streets too. So um, it's this will be a great couple months when we get paving and, and restriping. But and none, none of the other three projects that I oversee, three other cities received this grant. So I was very proud that we got it here. Yeah, yeah that's excellent. Okay, any, any questions, comments? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We don't. This is the workshop. We don't take public comment during the workshop. Um, would you mind maybe meeting with Mr. West after the uh, after his presentation? So and he'll be glad are, to answer any questions yeah. for you. Yeah. If you don't mind, uh, document I issue as to 
Three. Okay, I've got three. I tell you what we're gonna do. Let us let us go ahead and finish this, and then let him get with so, you and Jeff just and answer this any and I'll, questions. I'll talk with you. We'll step out there and I'll talk. Yeah, to you about thank you. So, at our council right. meeting, we do take public comment, but at the workshop, we just we don't. So, but okay, Jeff is so. our he's he's the man. So, so yeah, if you don't mind, just Jeff, if you'll get with him when, when you sure get through will. making your presentation. Thank okay. you, thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Any other questions about the LME resurfacing? And the additional funding. Okay, Jeff, go ahead and, uh, if you will, present the information about the back code. I know we took okay. on that. Okay, um, part of our capital replacement program for 2019 included a uh, back code to replace one of the old ones we've got. We've got a back code. We looked at doing some work on it and getting it up to speed, but it's about thirty thousand dollars just to replace bushings and hoses and everything, get it back up to where it would be a new condition back code. Um, we accepted bids on those. Um, the bids came back and, and we looked at it because we did the buyback program and uh, Yancey Cat come in at a better price when you look at the back the buyback program. Um, the original base bid was ninety one thousand six fifty seven. In five years they'll give us fifty three thousand dollars back for that back hoe to go uh, toward the new one and the difference is thirty eight thousand uh, dollars. The next lowest one was Right, almost forty thousand. It was a JCB, but looking at the buyback program, that's the way to go because we're not. In, we'll get thirty something thousand dollars back at the end of that time to apply for the next back code and, and just continue that process. And if you look over time, eventually we'll end up with a back code that we really don't have any money in if, if we keep up with these programs. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> that information's in our packet. Sorry. Any comments? Okay. All right. All right. I think, Jeff, that concludes your part of the program, Yes, right? ma'am. Okay. You. If you'll just get with these folks okay. right here and answer their questions, that would, I would appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Going on to the next item, uh, item number eight is discussion of a GFA loan for wastewater treatment plant improvements. Pete, you want to share that with us? Um, this is, uh, GFA obviously is a Georgia Environmentals uh, agency which has plentiful amount of money for projects and we applied for a clean water state loan or a grant program with GFA. Unfortunately, we did not qualify for grant dollars, but we have about $1.3 million worth of work that has to be done at the wastewater plant. And uh, this, we do have some capital money that we, we do have available, but the situation that, that we're under, um, this, would be, this would be city funds, not joint funds. But what, what I'd like to talk with you about is this program applying for a GFA loan. Uh, we're approved for $2 million, but we really only need 1.3. Uh, this allows us to use the money at a very low interest rate, 2%. Uh, we get only pay, make interest payments and a 1% origination fee if we use and when we use the money. Uh, so this it doesn't uh, go into effect until uh, construction is complete. So it really allows us to digest, make sure we have the available funds. Blast is, is on target. Most importantly, that uh, this is uh, it's going to be city originated. So what we really need to do this particular year at the plant, we need to uh, rehab the grid system. Uh, we need to do a bar screen replacement, aerobic digester cleaning, some skate improvements, and some pumps and valves and gate replacements. All this is very common maintenance, but our plant is starting to age. Uh, so it is time to do that. I'm working with ESG engineering very closely. Trey and, and actually Dan is working on this uh, to talk about how to go about it and uh, we're pretty comfortable with the costs. Uh, we also have a lift station uh, that, that we need to make some improvement, improvement on. So this is really a financing vehicle that I would highly recommend us doing uh, and paying back um, when the time is appropriate. Uh, it could be next year, it could be three years down the road, but very low, low interest, but it most exclusively uh, is city originated. Money. Is there a prepayment penalty? There is not. Not. And again, GFA is very, um, they have a lot of money to loan. This is a perfect, perfect approach, project. Actually, we've applied already just to see what they say. We applied for the grant. They said you can't have the grant, but you can, you can certainly do a loan, just loan if you'd like to do so. So, um, but the, the plant is on, ta on task for, for getting this maintenance this year. And this is just a great way of doing it so we don't have to put up 1.3 million of capital right out of the gate. 
questions on that? Any objections? If not, I can formalize the paperwork and we could, I'd like to have Trey to come to the next meeting so he could, if you have any specific questions, he can certainly answer that for you. So right now you just need our authorization to go ahead and proceed with the... I'm not going to proceed. I'll just drain off the paperwork okay. for the next meeting. Okay. All right. And then have him come in That's right. and present. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments on that? That Jeep program. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> okay. All right. Moving on to the next discussion of fences and walls in commercial downtown. You, you want to take yeah, the lead Danny, on that? Danny, if you want to come up, we'll, we'll just kind of. This is for really open for discussion. If, if you remember the fencing in downtown, we did have the situation with one property owner who put up a fence for exclusivity of parking. Uh, really, it, caught, it's, it has caused some aesthetics, it caused some issues uh, in and around public safety. But again, um, it, it, it is approved and the way it was done, there was nothing wrong with that. However, uh, I did discuss this with the DDA and uh, it is really uh, important for us to talk about it that how you see going forward, improving the aesthetics, improving the uh, protection of the downtown area exclusively, uh, meaning the central business district, uh, that fences um, certainly um, could hinder access points um, and, um, and for aesthetic, especially when it aligns an alley. So we're trying to discuss some language that is palatable for you, or if you want to entertain something else, or if you just want to leave it alone, that's certainly um, your, um, your desire. So if, uh, if there's just really Rob and Danny, if we want to talk through that, uh, this is uh, for open discussion, because it's time to take this one off the table. Well, I I did draft up a proposed ordinance and, and uh, basically, you know, the charter gives city council the authority to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens, uh, as well as to deal with, you know, uh, right of ways and streets and buildings. And it's, um, it, it seemed to me that I, I remember when Chief Bennett was here talking the other night about uh, the difficulty that the fire department could have, you know, going up to a, a building in the, in the rear. And so we're, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, we're talking about safety issues. I think that there's issues with pedestrian travel, you know, that can be restricted. Um, but, you know, of course, then you, you know, you always have the corresponding, you know, pro private property interests, but, you know, uh, about what people want to do with their property. But it, I've looked uh, in many, many cities and places and really have not been able to find anything that, uh, is directly on point. It seemed to me that from the discussions that we've had before, it was really the issue of having a fence along our right of way, you know, particularly three alleys, uh, the rear alleys, and then uh, maybe up to you know, the rear of the building. So the draft that I basically prepared was is not allowing you know fences, you know, adjacent to the right of way or from the right of way to the rear of the building. It almost sounds like no fences. Um, so that is kind of the way it is, right? And at least the way I drafted it with the idea that basically not having fences along the alleys and between the alleys and the buildings. But I, again, as, as Pete said, this is just kind of out there for discussion as far as what Consul's you know, vision may be about <coughs> what you all want to see and, and how y'all want it. Uh, you know, you know. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is I just want to make sure that we don't prohibit, um, the, just to use an example, uh, you know, we have the Bistro and Giggles restaurant that's across the street every year. They have a nice courtyard dining area with a little fence, you know, that's kind of sections off their, their back dining area from the First Street extension. And it's, it, to me, that seems very appropriate. If we were looking at maybe allowing, you know, more outdoor dining, if, you know, as, as you know, restaurant, I just want to make sure we don't get into a situation I, where if someone says, I want to sort of cordon off this area for outdoor dining, you know, that, that we, you know, we've got this no fences rule and that wouldn't be appropriate. True. So. Now, but your example that you gave, I mean, I, I could be wrong if I'm thinking of the right place, but that fence would not be between the right of way and the rear of the building. Wouldn't it be more back into the... Courtyard area, that fence. It's right at the, it's the sidewalk. Right at the sidewalk. Okay. But it's very tastefully done, and it, and it, you know, it just creates that little bit of a barrier, so you know that this is the dining area and this is the sidewalk. 
Um, you know, and outdoor dining is very popular. We've had a lot of people sure. say, can, can we have outdoor dining? And if we, you know, if we're sort of moving to this, you know, sort of new renaissance of downtown with these types of things, I just want to make sure that we do keep safety in mind so that, you know, we don't want to, um, but that little fence is just a small picket fence. I don't think any of these guys that we just saw in this video would have any issue getting a fire hose over that little fence versus, you know, where you've got a, a big chain link fence that, you know, really does prohibit you from getting to another building. Um, all the buildings around that particular situation are very accessible. Um, so I just, just something for food for thought. Well, and that's why, that. that's yeah. really what I wanted to hear from y'all. Yeah, because like I said, at this point, I don't know really, yeah. you know, want, I want to put it on paper, but right. we don't want to have any unintended consequences. Right. I mean, I think a good starting point is that we, <clears throat> I would say, we don't want to see fences along the alley Alice, right away. Right. I think that would That's be number cool. one. Yeah. And then the next question is, okay, if uh, the problem that I was dealing with is that if you didn't allow a fence adjacent to the alley right of way, well, maybe they could set their fence two feet into the property yeah. line and you have the same issue. And so that's why I was trying to conceptualize how do you prevent, you know, that fence from being two, three, three feet, four, you know, four feet into the line and you still have you know, the same issue that, that we've got. Uh, but I certainly appreciate what you're saying here, Louise, that, you know, there can be instances where a fence would, it, it doesn't, it's attractive. It doesn't create any safety issues, right. but yet, from the plain reading of the statute, I mean, of the ordinance, it they, could be interpreted that would not, yeah. uh, would not yeah. fly. And Rob's talking, if you look at the map, the red is it's a very tight area, and really, that is the exclusive area we're referring to, and that is exactly right. It's the alleyways that have really caused some eyebrows to be raised to say, you know, what if and what about tomorrow? So it's a very, very tight area that we're talking about. <coughs> But this has been, you know, of course, we do have this moratorium, and certainly we don't like these things to go on for right. a long period of time. And so, uh, you know, Pete thought it was a big good idea, and I did too, to try to get this on the agenda and maybe talk to you with some ideas. Because uh, like I say, I've, I've got something, you know, drafted. We really just need to try to plug into exactly what it is that we want to um, Do y'all disagree that the, that Focusing on the alleyways is really, and within just the um, central business district, do you feel like that's the appropriate thing to do? I think it is, but have we got any feedback from the businesses down there? I mean, it's going to affect, it could affect them, and I'd like to have their, their viewpoint on that. I don't know. Have, have y'all heard anything? Or any no, conversation? No, because, I mean, I think we ought to get, get their opinion and get their feedback. <clears throat> who do we need to do that? Would that be Danny? Check on that, or who? Mm -hmm. What was it? The uh, tourism? Not tourism. Uh, uh, down uh, Main Street, maybe? Main or Street. TMA? Probably the Merchants Association. Merchants Association. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah Bruce, um, would, would you and Danny craft kind of a questionnaire uh, to, to ask, you know, here's our sample ordinance, here's our map, and can you put it out to all the merchants to get some feedback on yeah, we what that. what some of the comments may be, if if mm -hmm. any, uh, and how they would feel about that. It just we, we need a deadline so we could give something back, uh, hopefully by you know, by mid mid month. So if you could do that by the end of this week, that'd be great. Absolutely. Is that's that good, okay with that's everybody? A good point. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Yeah. I'll let you know. Okay. Everybody good with that then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think that's, that you make a very very good point on that. Thank you, Frank. Okay. All right, any other questions about about that? Okay, uh, item number 10 is a recommendation from the Solid Waste Committee on the uh, residential garbage collection. Um, I'd like to, I don't know, Pete, if you want to open up the conversation, or Frank and Johnny, I know both of you served with some of our other folks on that committee. Uh, so whoever wants to jump in, jump in. Sure, well, I'd like, I'd like to say, you know, give some background. About 18 months ago, we formed a Solid Waste Committee with Councilman Terrell and I. And of course, we've had several meetings and meetings with, with Pete uh, over the time. Uh, when, we, so when we got RFPs for our uh, new contract, we uh, expanded the committee at Ricky Hobby and Jonathan Taylor and James Henderson from the landfill operations. So we had a, we had a good professional committee. Um, we spent a lot of time going through all the RFPs. Um, 
It was a lot of hours. We had several meetings. Um, we tried to, to look at everything. We, we always give consideration to um, local businesses when we do this. However, the committee wanted to look at what's best for the citizens of Tipton uh, right now and for the future. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we did, and we had a, a very, some very good professional um, discussions about that. Okay. And then um, I know that we're at a point, we had the presentations um, what, about a week or so ago uh, from the three that the Solid Waste Committee selected to move forward with. At this point, we're sort of at a standstill. Um, <coughs> The, um, it, we need a recommendation, a final recommendation from the Solid Waste Committee regarding who we should at least begin negotiations with. Not to say that this mm -hmm. is the final <coughs> selection, whoever it is, and I don't know who your selection is at this point, but whoever that is, but we need to give something to Pete to begin to negotiate with one of these companies to see if we can move on to the next step. If you make your recommendation, if it's company A, B, or C, Pete goes in and says, I want to negotiate, you know, based on the recommendation with company A, company A says, there is no negotiation. You've got the, you've got the information in your packet, and that's what it is. Then we need to go to the next company. So I, I want to be clear, this is not the final selection. This is just to go to that next step in conversation with whatever company that uh, we're not selecting a company at this point in time. So. Right. But we've got to see, you know, because we talked about changing some of the things that was, you know, that were originally presented. So. And the committee uh, did discuss that. The committee made a unanimous recommendation uh, for we, Ryland Environmental. But are we going to we, are we gonna split? Are you also going to talk about splitting, you know, what the, the city might do, yard debris and, and bulk waste? Was that part the, of the committee it? discussed that in Is detail? That, we decided that we couldn't we couldn't do that as as cost effective as this proposal. Okay. But we've got to get all of that on the table for our consideration. I appreciate regardless. that, but yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess I question a, a recommendation coming from the committee. Well, why you have? You got a question? Well, hang well, on, hang, not, on, hang, on, hang on. Well, because no more. I'm not gonna hang on. Why did why did why did you hide? I mean, why did you instruct this committee if you're not going to accept our re recommendation? In other words, what you saying to us here, here to me, is look, bless y'all. You just oh, we, we just spent hours and hours of our time to 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 listen and to get all get get the record. And then nobody listened to the recommendation. What the hell? Well, wait a minute. Didn't we're, say we're, we did. Well, last time let, I looked, yeah. there's five of us. Yeah, let, yeah exactly. Let, and you're two. Yeah, exactly. Are we gonna let two out of the five make the decision for everybody? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Hang on, just a minute. Let me make a point of order. This is. I want to be clear with everybody. This is not the final selection of anybody to provide but do we garbage. Move, but do we move forward? Y'all run. Question the, is. Y'all run the city council. Johnny, please come back. Okay, please, Johnny. We've got to be able to discuss this, and we've got to. You know be able what? I don't get the same Okay, hold on just a minute now. Uh, this is we need to. Why, be able would, why would you recommend? Why would you get a a, a, a committee? We, you know, how many hours we spent doing this? One. Do you know how many hours we spent one, doing this? All right. One. I got one sentence into my comment. And I, I and I jumped up. I did. Exactly, you did. Yeah. And last time uh -huh. I looked, we could all speak. Yeah. And, and, and I'm speaking. Hold, hold and Johnny. I'm speaking. And I was speaking first. And I'm speaking. So let's just calm down. Yeah, let's I ain't going to calm down. Okay. You don't tell me what Listen, to do. Hold on just you a don't minute. Tell me I can't gentlemen, speak. Right. gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to both please refrain for one minute. Johnny, let Jack ask his question. This is, a not, this is for discussion, and we've got to be able to throw all of our questions out on the table to make the best decision on how we're going to move forward. This is not the selection of the final that's my, judgment. So so please that finish was your my question. Only point of a question as to whether I mean going into negotiating with a company is one step before you get the contract. Right. And but. so if, if you're saying you're going to negotiate with the with the company that that the committee, and I didn't say I was opposed or, or not committee. opposed or in favor of or whatever, that the committee says, I mean, that's almost like, well, we've, we've made a decision. Well, I, guess I don't know that that's the, 
I guess I'd rather take a vote and then well, well, the vote come up next time, next and, meeting. And then negotiate with them. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, let me clarify just for, for numbers purposes. And we went through this very, very <coughs> exclusively. We, we, Ricky did a great job putting the numbers together. And it's going to cost us at least $3.50 for yard trucks. And we have to buy the trucks and we have to hire the people and we've got to do this and we have to do that. Very, you know, we could do it, but at the money, at the expense, uh, we, we laid all that out perfectly. Um, Ryland um, is committed to do yard trash every week um, for cheaper than what we could do, what the city could do it for. So that's what the committee has really talked about. We did pros and cons. We laid out all the figures, and realistically, I, you know, we we could present to, to say, well, you know, can, can we do the yard trash? We can, but it'd be just more money uh, at the end of the day. So and that's it, and how the that's how the decision was reached. Just my opinion. I'm gonna throw this out there. If Pete goes back to where it is, and they and they say no, you know, this is these are the hard now that you know now we've got to put in the door. These are the hard factual cost, and this is what it's going to be. We may change our mind. We may take that back to the committee and say no, this isn't the best. You know, but there's got to be that rest of the discussion. For, you know, it's to me. I think it would be better to have all of that before we vote versus vote and then get that and then find out that's not the right thing for yeah, us. Yeah, we're just, just telling you what the committee decided okay. after looking at it uh, thoroughly. And, and don't get me wrong, I don't, yeah. I don't disagree, but you're saying, okay, if, if you go to Ryland and they say, no, we're not changing, then you're going to, then the committee is okay with going to the next one? Yeah. And they make a little, so the, so the next one makes a little change and and then you got to go back and say, well, that changing enough for me to change off of who I had for number one. No, I, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. Let me give you, for instance, if Ryland says that we're not going to use rear loaders, we're just, we're not going to buy rear loaders. We're going to use the automated trucks. And the committee, you know, we all know you can't use a, a, that type of automation in the alleyways. Yeah. So if Ryland says, well, Pete, look, I'm sorry, we, we can't use that type of truck, it's, I'm going to say, well, look, we, there's no reason to go forward with this. We're going to have to go back to the committee, and we're going to need to go to Company B, or bring it back to y'all to say, well, "Look, I, you know, we tried." How important is a rear loader garbage truck? We and may decide that that's not that very, important, very or it's very important. Well, but, but what? Okay, now, pretty, yeah. it, rear loaders might be important to the committee. Well, I can tell you, the automated is important to me mm -hmm. because it is, it is strictly a safety issue. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize there's there's alleys and stuff, but you know, I, I would get just as, as adamant as, as my friend Johnny does <laughs> over safety things and what, what they can do. Safety is first. And, and automated is, safety is, first. is the way that it ought to go. Safety is first. You know, so I guess, but that's where I, <clears throat> that's where that's almost a, a group mm -hmm. decision and, and discussion versus just, well, just it is. It's, that's not, it's not I, just compared. That's all I'm saying. All the committee is doing is, is, is telling recommendation. you recommendation based upon our thorough look at everything. Right. Now it comes to heavy lifting because I've got to meet, I've got to talk about safety, I've got to talk about trucks, I've got to talk about all different districts, I've got to talk about how they're going to pick up, I've got to talk about what time they're going to pick up, I've got to talk about education. Now it comes to heavy lifting for Ricky and I because this is where it really gets down to the brass tacks for you that you're comfortable going forward with the contract in addition to, to price and Franchise fees, et cetera, et cetera. And we haven't even talked about the landfill yet. So that's where we, we, we make sure that I have all the flavors. Each each of you want something because we, we, we've had the complaints. We know what we want. We want to understand where we need to go for the claim. But I don't county. want this council to vote on anything with regard to a contract until every one of your questions have been answered. We're and, not, we're and everything has been thoroughly explored. Exactly. And, 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 and you, you know, so... Um, if you, I know we've all received uh, calls uh, and emails and text messages from constituents and businesses, and you know we want to make sure that I mean it's a very, everybody know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we can't vote next week. I mean week after next, we can't. We let, let's just do the the voting for uh, the council meeting in June. Well, I don't think we'll have all the information by June. Work session in June. I have to have it by. I'm talking about for Matt. Okay, so yeah. we, we, we don't need the workshop this thing no more. <laughs> to, no, the next is the real, is there's no time left for that. No, so June there's no, no sense to keep workshopping it. 
But we're not voting on to give you the power to go discuss this. You, you can. We can do that if, if you want to take it to the next meeting. And yeah, because we can't vote tonight. Oh, no, we can't we vote tonight. Here, here's my math. And, and, and the numbers that you gave me, Pete, for every week's service for the city of Tipton to do it was $5.30 per month. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, $5.30 per month for yard trash. Is that right? No, I'm sorry. Three fifty. Three fifty. Three fifty. I was wrong with my math. There, three fifty, and then uh, for bulk waste, a dollar. So we're talking about four fifty. Were those numbers correct? Yes. All right. Uh, let's just say um, <coughs> for garbage on Golden was eight dollars. And ninety cents, and his recycling bid for every week was four dollars. Is that right? This is what Wes is looking at here. Is that correct? Every every other week, mm -hmm. except garbage, but the recycle recycle not every week. Are you doing every week recycle or every other week recycle? Every other week. Every other week, three dollars. For no, not for us. Every week, every week service except recycling. No, no, I'm looking back week. at the numbers for for what the city would charge. So is it three fifty for every other week recycling fee? Is that what that number is? Yeah, we, we, the five thirty we did every week. Um, for recycle, that's just because we have to buy a truck and yard trash is 350. All right. 350 and one dollar. Oh, 4, right, 450 right. for every week the city to do yard debris. Yard debris in bulk. Debris in bulk. 450. It's just time to get from trash. Investment. Trash is at $8.90. All right, and then every other week recycling is three is three dollars. <laughs> Okay. Four fifty. Eight nine and three dollars. Sixteen forty. All right. If we did that use the same with with Ryland, I guess they're including their garbage and recycling in at sixteen twenty five? Yes. Every yes. And recycle. All right. And then we would be four fifty for that, so that would leave me twenty dollars and seventy five cents if the city of Tiffin did it. Uh, if they just did it by themselves and they handled everything, their best bid was nineteen thirty three. Still three dollars cheaper, and they're also cheaper in commercial. I don't know how y'all missed that. How about the? Well, no, I'm not going to. I see. I didn't see how this, how it was not cheap. It, it's a fundamental yard debris bulk. Can it be done by the city cheaper and better? The problem we have right now is I have to call Pete all the time. It's things that that the constituents that need to be picked up. Golden says well, we can't pick it up because it's either too wide or too long or whatever. So the city goes and picks it up. But at the end of the day, we got to pick it up. So we have we to purchase additional equipment, don't we? We have to buy it all and hire people. And so we have. Uh, so I mean, there, there's additional costs than just what you see there. Well, but are there? No, 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 no. no. Uh, you, 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 you no and I've had these conversations for the last month. Oh, it, does the four dollars and fifty cents include everything? Does that cost? Debt service and reimbursement and, and to I guess we would have to borrow the money from the general fund reserves and yeah. and, and paying the people and the whole shooting match. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, we'd have to uh, yeah there, we'd have to have a loan. It amortizes uh, over five years uh, at those numbers. Um, but if those numbers aren't correct, then that's just a different ballgame. That's a different ballgame. That's what y'all were saying. Today. Well. Uh, I guess, does that include everything? I mean, purchasing the equipment, everything? Sorry. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little, a little, I'm not sure.
sure we're, we're all right. Um, missed it. The 450 included. Yeah, the 450 was included in the bulk. Okay, for bulk and for yard trash. That's right. But that included. Right. And that included all the costs, equipment costs, people, the whole sheet matches discussion. It's going to, that, that's, that's breaking down. Okay. That's right. Because you asked the question, did that include the amortized, the startup costs? Yep. And, uh, the answer was yes. The answer was yes. But, um, that is what I guess I'm saying is, is it feasible for us to do this? Then we know who it is. If it's not feasible, then we know who it is. That's why that's got to be and discussed that, before we go any further. Well, but the other there's another question though. You know, Ryland had a lump sum. Is is Ryland interested in garbage, residential garbage only, and and recycling without yard debris in bulk? And if so, what is that price? Well, uh, I mean, that's because theirs is all together. That'd be just I don't think that was a part of the RFP for that. That'd be a contract discussion to say, if, you know, are you interested in the site? I mean, I really want to give you a, a good answer. I mean, Ricky could probably you know, share some, you know, what we did right, what we did wrong, and you know, is it feasible to do that? Uh, if that's the, that's the bulk of the work. I mean, that is the hardest part: the yard trash and the bulk keeping. Our right away is clean. That's the hardest part, you know. And is it worth it for us? You know, we've got a couple million bucks to put up and have, you know, whether ESG or we, you know, we do it ourselves. Is that something that we want to do at this particular point? Feasibility. If someone could do it, you know, along the same lines, it costs. I, I would say let them do it. Uh, and realistically, mm -hmm. um, if Ricky, is is that accurate? Is that Rick? Do you mind stop come, come up and answer the question? Yeah. Come on. So, Fire just ball. feasibility, <laughs> Ricky. Just talk through that a little bit, so there's an understanding. You you ran it for years. Well, those numbers, if I'm not mistaken, you know, without looking at what you're looking at, did not include the purchase of the vehicles. Well, that's that what was I above. Thought. That was above and beyond. Thank you. That's what I thought. Okay. The the numbers you're seeing is operation numbers. Right, that will pay the debt on the vehicle. Uh, so okay. the, so that, that's two different, that, they were saying two different things then. You, if, if you borrow and you and you amortize what over the, the equipment over a period of time, it costs you X, X dollars. Right. And that's why the original question is, does that 450 include <clears throat> that cost? And you could take that number, whatever the amortization is, divided by the total customers, and that's what you would add. That would be your total right. household right. And it, charge, it, basically. It's not included really? in that 450. <clears throat> All right, so that's what I That's would. operational only. How many trucks would we need? We would definitely need a rear, uh, to, you know, for, if you're just looking at yard waste right now, mm -hmm. rear that's loader nice. and a knuckle room truck. Uh, what's, what's just the ballpark? You gotta be exact. I won't hold you to it. What's something like those costs? A million bucks for both of them? Oh, no. no. Oh. 120, 135,000 for a knuckle boom, probably 155,000 for a rear loader. 300,000? So, you know, over, a little over $300 to get two vehicles. A little over how much did you say? A little over 300,000. So I think Pete and I, we talked about it, it was close to $400,000 times it was done. Or if you could, what you've lost in if you would invested it somewhere else. Yeah. So you're talking about maybe a dollar difference. So instead of 1640, 1740, still cheaper than. Well, you've got a recommendation from the Solid Waste Committee. Right. We're not voting tonight, but we've got to either move forward or stop what we're doing. Um, so we, we've got to. I think we need to stop. I mean, I think the questions are. I mean, we got to figure out how much. Is there, going there's to cost no way you're going to be able to stop. You, you've got a contract ending. Right. Well, and that's no. my point. I mean, what, what is? What do y'all want to do? I mean, we 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 discussed this and discussed it, and, and we keep kind of. You know, it's, it's, it feels like every time we get to the table, you know, things keep changing. So we we've got to nail this down, and we've got to do 
we've got to do it very methodically and, and, and logically and, and intelligently. Um, so what is the what is the will of the council? Well, I, I, mean, I, I guess my thing is is I mean there's a big difference between what I calculated 1640 and then what 1933. You know that's that's a large gap, and not only that, the commercial side is a lot cheaper as well. Um, so you, we, I know we have to look at the residents, but we also have to look at the businesses as well. So mm -hmm. you know when you put both of those together, that's how I would. That's how I have approached this in picking uh, who I think is the lowest bid in, in the city. But if we're not going to do, if the city is not going to do that, if the city is not going to do debris, uh, uh, trash, and, and then bulk waste, and then it goes back to that, then that's the decision that we have I, to make. And I don't that. think we've decided that yet. No, I we think that's, that. that's, that's, I think that's the reason we need, we need to sort of Focus on somebody but to that, be in heaven. That was, we had if we're going to do that, that, that answer is going to determine who if we're going to do the contract with. Not necessarily, because, because it's not want. just based on price. We're and not making a decision. That's what just based on price. They made a recommendation. The recommendation it's, it's was not. It's just a recommendation. The, right, but we're not for the city to pick up, right? That was the city's recommendation. Okay, that committee's recommendation. So we haven't decided. No, we have no. not decided. No, but just, just but the recommendation for CD not to get into that. And I also want to say that the committee did not make a recommendation <clears throat> solely based on price. So it's, it's, not on solely, price. it's not solely on price. I appreciate price, price is part of it, but it's not solely on I appreciate that. It really as a recommendation, Ricky, you, you can have is it. Well, you saw the, the uh, scoring tables. You have those, uh, it, right. and it's not focused on just pricing. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah because agree. that's not what your constituents want either. Right. Because, you know, we have had issues. Right. So we just put it all together on the, uh, the scoring table. And price was part of it, but it's, it just didn't play a majority. If I was going to make a recommendation to you that the city was going to get back into it, I'd say we'd go full tilt and do everything. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't, that would, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, so the committee would recommend that here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, no, I looked at that I price. That number is yeah. too. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. But but the, it gets back to what's the biggest issue that that I hear, and it's yard debris and bulk pipes. Yeah. And and yeah. the only question is, is one vendor going to do better than the other vendor, or at the end of the day, is a city who's got the vested interest in in the, the residents mm -hmm. going to do the best job. You know, I was kind of, and I talked this with Jack. I didn't share it with y'all, but I will now. The bulk waste that the city did it. My idea was to say, okay, you got four or five items you want to put out there. That's fine. Anything over five, you have to get a call, and there will be a special charge. It's a special pickup. You know, if you got, and we'll be able to determine that when we go through there and we check out. If you got a couch and four bedroom house that's getting moved out, that's going to be a special pickup. But if you want to throw, like I got an old refrigerator I want to get out, I got a new one we'll put in my garage, I want to throw that old refrigerator out there, boom, that's what I'm paying the 350 or the extra dollar for uh, per month is have to get it rid of that. Is you have it picked up. Yeah. Then so you don't, you don't have to include a code enforcement with that also because it, it won't happen. Right. Oh, I, it, that's not, a, you know, sounds good, but it won't happen. It's easy. It's very complicated. And again, we've talked this back and forwards and I really no, well, I mean I don't know if it'd be that hard because I guarantee you if there's a house full of crap that's out there one of us is going to get a call about it and then guess what and we do yeah I, mean, I, know, I can tell you where it's going to be you know, Johnny's already call, you know who get called and then president. guess who you Johnny go call you go call president you go that's call president yeah because yeah, yeah, it, it happens all the time I, absolutely it, it, okay. it has to, the problem is it has to be taken care of and we say well it's too big a problem well no it's not we too big a problem expect, we have to take care of it we can't expect Rhyme Golden or Advance to go up there and pick up somebody else's stuff who is not on service, period. I mean, that's, you know, that's, 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 that's what we've talked about the past. That's, why, yeah, right. Right. that's why I think that we've been talking the about city that handled years. those two mm -hmm. items in, in, in a sense we're keeping Tifton beautiful by, you know, everybody pitching in. Mm -hmm. And the city also knows whose it is, and the city approaches the, you know, that person and said, you know, here's the deal. You owe this money. That's right. Until you owe this money, you ain't gonna get any service. I mean, but we have that there. leverage. That's why we got. That's why we got Dan the Wallace right there. I mean, what they call that? And about code, yeah, enforcement. code enforcement. That's mm -hmm. why we got them. Okay. That's right. I agree. That's right. That's what. That's what they do. All right. Well, what? What? Do you, I mean, the, the clock's ticking. What do y'all want to do? Go ahead. So how do we move forward? Yeah. I, I've, I've got to get to the table with somebody. somebody. 
and okay. we talk about these specifics. I could entertain that as an alternate to, to run the costs, but I need to get that, and I need to get you a contract so we can deliberate on this. We do. We just we don't have much okay. time left. All right. So, so what you got? So what do y'all? What, what's y'all's pleasure? What, what would you like to do? I'm still. I mean, I want to know what the city. What's it going to cost us to do both? I still haven't been told that answer. I, I, yeah, I mean, which one? You? I think no. I, have not, I, I think we 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 have the the committee's recommendation, and, and right. that, but I think the the meeting that we have in two weeks, whatever, we vote and we vote for then, who he goes to contract with. Right. Or or if we decide, okay, so one of us might make a motion that says we want. The city to do yard debris and and bulk. We want garbage to be company X Y Z, and it either passes or it doesn't. And if they come up with a motion that says we want Ryland to do everything, and it either passes or it doesn't. I, I think what Pete's looking for is just being able to start negotiations, right, or talking with the company. But he can't because we don't know whether the city's going to pick up yard debris or not. Because I think there's two of us that say city ought to pick up yard debris, and there's two that says the city shouldn't pick up yard debris. And we're not going to ask the mayor to make a decision <laughs> tonight because we're not voting on him yet. Right. Well, Let's I see. mean, can I just, it seems to me that, Wes, you'd, you need some additional information as far as, in, in, in like, as far as the cost. That was an operational cost at 450. I want to know how much is it going to cost as far as to get this thing off the ground. 300000 is $425,000. Let's look at $425,000, amortize it over a five-year period. At one percent, so you can reimburse if you re if you take it from the general fund to reimburse the general fund at one percent, uh, divided by number of customers, and that's what it'll be. So it'd be four fifty plus if it's an extra dollar and a half or whatever, it'd be five dollars or whatever, and then that will be the number that I will be satisfied with. And that's how I'm going to calculate. Yeah, we can that's, do that's, that. That's my that's my. I, would, I guess what I one thing I would say is to make sure that. Looks like the vote's going to be, you know, in a couple of weeks. Make sure everybody is ready to, to know the numbers and know. All right, well, let's use this time then. Throw every single question out there for, whether it's for Ricky or for Pete or for, you know, the committee or whatever. Let's make sure that we have every, so what, what are your, go, I mean, All right. line them up. All right, we need to know how many people it's going to take to, run, to pick up the trash. So we're going to need to know salaries. We're going to need to know benefits. We're going to need to know insurance. So you're going to basically create a budget for Red this department. A new department. That, that's part of your 450. That's a part of my 450. All and right. it explained how many people. Yeah, so that's, it uh, it yeah. showed you how many people on the table. Okay. All right, so that part of it is handled. Okay. Now we need to know how much is it going to cost to get the equipment and and then that would be the that was also on your uh, that was also showed you, part of that 450 no no it was also in your package in showing package. you we needed what type of equipment and how oh, much yeah. you know how much it would cost yeah 425 was now we point. just need to break it down for you yeah and add it to 450 then we'll yeah. have you that's it okay well then if it's in the package you should you should have that information all right well give me five seconds i'll, I'll break it i'll break it right on I down can, and give it I to you i got an amortization calculator on my phone Ricky, for some reason i'm a bank this <laughs> let's see okay moving forward so in other words what we want to do is is ask all the questions we have in the next meeting we can take a look is that what you're suggesting there i'll do whatever i mean that's what it sounds like that these two are asking for trying to come to some consensus on how we can move forward the committee has a recommendation they have additional questions um i think if we need to err on any side it's it's erring on the, the, the side of um, conserving you know um, a decision until uh, reserving a decision until everyone's questions are answered and answered thoroughly and transparently and and, and you have all the information that you need Okay. Um, I know that y'all have, have, and I appreciate very much the time that you devoted to this. I know it's been a lot of time, and same thing with you know Ricky with your time and with Jonathan and and, um, and with James. He's not here this evening, but the rest of the committee. But I do want um, I do want everyone's questions answered, um, and I and understand that you know there are numerous factors. That was the purpose for the score sheet, so that you know. 
Um, cost is certainly very important. Certain, you know, customer service and service is important. Responsiveness, education, and like Pete said, we haven't even gotten into the landfill discussion yet. So how can we select a company um, from the three that, that met the threshold for the request for proposals? How can we select from one of those three so that we know moving forward that we have made the absolute best decision for this community? That's and I, I want you to have all the information that you need. So right. I think respecting what the committee has done and taking that into consideration, but also giving these gentlemen time to get you a little bit more information uh, so that you, you feel comfortable with, with, you know, with everything down to the penny. How many customers do we 47. have? Huh? 47. 4,700. While he's figuring that on the commercial, What's, what's the ratio of these, the 95 gallon containers, golden is higher, but on the two, four, six, and eight yard containers, he's lower. So do we have a count to know at, at the end of the day is 300, 300 of, is that, which one is that? that not, that's the two, four, six, and eight yard container? Do some of them have 95 gallon containers? Yes, I mean, you do have some in you know in the area downtown area that carries the ninety five gallon cans. Ninety five gallon, that's like a residential. Like a residential okay. can, same thing as a residential. So there's not many of those. Are you saying three hundred? You're saying three hundred of the other. I think. Yeah, I think if I'd have to go back and look at what billing shows, but maybe a hundred and seventy five with cans, commercial cans. They're talking 95 gallon cans. 90, 175 of those. Yeah, I don't have a clue cans. about the dumpsters now because we haven't, we okay. don't have anything to do with the building on that. That Mr. Golden takes care of all that. So I don't know how many dumpsters are out there. I can give you a good guess because we haven't had a lot of change in downtown areas since what's, what's in the last five guess? years. Well, at the last and, time. And, and just I understand it's just. There was probably a thousand customers with dumpsters. Now, I don't, but now that's including county. And Mr. Golden okay. takes care of county too. Sure, that's right. Okay. But there's more of those. You know, there's more of those dumpsters in there. Oh, are yes. 95 oh yes. Oh yes. yes. I mean, okay. some of your restaurants around here has three dumpsters. Okay. You know. Okay. okay. All right. So if you paid back. $425,000 at 1% back to the general fund in a five-year period. Your monthly payment to the, to the general fund will be roughly $7,265 a month. Pete told me eight. You're close. That's yes, good. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, divide that by 4,700. That's $1.55 added to it. So that'd be $6.05 for debris and bulk waste pickup. Well, it's not counting everything. I mean, all in. Again, this is not including extra disposal. We're using it on current disposal. Um, I didn't count for anything extra. I didn't do any fancy stuff. I didn't count for any discre uh, discretionary. And we are best at break even. Okay. At best, break even. And I will add that yard trash and bulk waste is the hardest part of collection for us meaning that it is it's going to take five days a week with men, ladies, whoever wants to do it, drive a truck, and we're going to have costs, we're going to have overtime, we're going to have a lot of things to it. There's a lot to it, putting a department together, picking up the hardest facet of solid waste. Garbage is routine. Not that it's not, it's not easy, but that's hard. But yard trash and bulk, for us, very hard. Why is, it, why is it harder for the for the city than for just a no with meaning, vendor? Meaning, meaning that we're going to have to put a lot to it. There's going to be a lot to consider. There, there's an awful lot of yard waste generated in Tifton. I've had uh, the grinders tell me per capita we have more than Valdosta does. Right, but that but that so, that is our that is our issue. That's right. So my point is whether it it is it. It's going to be hard for anybody. Exactly. Well, I mean, we won't please everybody either, no matter who does it. That's true. That's when we fall back on our code enforcement and y'all to help us enforce our codes, 
that we don't go out there and pick up a 18 foot tree, you know, when we're not supposed to, even the city. And that's why this RFP looked at things, not just price, because price is bottom line, and that's, we don't get there. But when you talk about customer service, and you talk about routes, I mean, the committee studied it very, very intensely, and this is where we need to get detailed, oriented with the contract to say, we are not gonna tolerate this. And what if the pile is bigger? What are you gonna do about it? And if you're gonna be, um, if you're gonna be not on route, or if, we, if something happens, there are gonna be fines involved, et cetera, et cetera. This is where all the details come out in the contract to get you satisfied to say one, one company or variations, one company is going to do this for X price, and our expectation is to have a clean city, all areas, all the time, and we should not have to be deliberating on solid waste discussions. I'm telling you this is abnormal. It's talking about this many complaints and this level of service where we are, I've never seen such. I'm not, not discarding or throwing off on anybody, but we're, we're putting way too much energy into something like this, and that's just my opinion. So how do y'all want to move forward? I've thrown some ideas I, out. Um, the committee's made a recommendation. I, I we think can, your suggestion is good, Mayor. I think okay. you know, everybody get their questions to, to Pete uh, <coughs> within the next week or so, so that by the time we have our next council meeting, we can we decide and discuss right. and make a decision. I agree. Okay, we can do it. Okay. Thank you. Is, okay, so um, deadline for getting your questions. Is it just on the cost of equipment? Is that all you need? You want all in. They've already sent it. They've already given that to us. Yeah, okay. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the only thing is, is five years to life, you think, of these? You push it to seven. Trucks are really. You push it to seven. <coughs> okay. You push it to ten if you want to. No, we will not do that. Then your maintenance <laughs> goes up, which costs you money too. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why we do a lot of, you know, the five-year buyback. If you heard Jeff talk about the five-year buyback, we do that on all of our landfill equipment. Yeah. Because once you hit that fifth, that sixth year, maintenance just soars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, yeah. let's, let's, make, let's make a commitment to have any questions to Pete, and then he can direct them out where they need to go by Thursday at noon. Okay. okay. So a decision meeting. will be made at next meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. And then um, if there's any questions that you have of the committee, <clears throat> funnel those through Pete too, and then he can get that to the committee and yeah. the back. That, I, can't that, ask, I can't ask Johnny direct. Well, I just want to uh, Yeah, yeah, that's what she's doing. Out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. Just to make sure we all have the yeah. information we need. Yeah, that's what they do. Uh, point the funnel through and we'll point the funnel We'll just come to an agreement, Johnny. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't need to we'll go to lunch. lunch. We'll come no, to an no, agreement. No, no, we can't go to lunch. No. Uh, okay, he's just saying yes, If, if y'all go to lunch, buddy, would you please go with them? Just <laughs> we ain't gonna go to the same restaurant. Just, just trying to get a point so that all the okay. information be collected and distributed. So that's that's why I think it'd be wise right. to funnel it that way. So, uh, so that we're all getting the information. Okay, that sound fair? Sounds fair. Everybody happy? Good that works. works. Good. All right, thank you. All right. Um, the next item on our agenda, and <laughs> we have more to discuss are the resolutions, but I do think we need to, there are two uh, of the resolution items that we need to table or remove from the agenda, correct? Yes, yes ma'am, I'd like to uh, remove number 11 for new alcohol license for John's Place and ask Rob to prepare um, the, the next appropriate stuff would be hearing. Um, we are looking at a few areas uh, with this particular location itself, and uh, we'll get back to you with some specific details if that is okay. The next uh, 14 resolution for providing an enterprise zone incentive I need to uh, go back and do another little homework uh, on some of the details. So if I could remove that one and bring that back around, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Anyone have any issues with that? No, no. And that, that address on 8th Street, just for the record, is 210, not 2010, 210 West 8th Street. Just so you know. All right. Let's, let's pick back up with item number 12, a resolution for amended alcohol license for Sunmark, and then also item number 13, amended alcohol license for Walmart on Tift Avenue, Jessica. Anything you want to share with us on those two applications? Um, they're just new managers. Uh, Sunmark um, is on South Central. The manager that was there left, and so they have a new manager, and so does Walmart. Okay. Okay. Well, Sunmark chain managed every six months. To me. <laughs> every six months, they got a new guy going in there. Well, we'll see somebody new in six months. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to stop. Okay, so these are pretty standard. 
Uh, next uh, item on the agenda is city manager report. You have anything you need yes, to share with us? Really quickly. Um, I will, I'm happy to report. Where's Emily? Emily? Emily's still here? She's okay. right over there. there. Um, for the month of April, the city of Tifton didn't have any accidents or incidents. That is awesome. Congratulations, guys. Uh, working in safety um, very hard, and uh, I'm, I'm real proud of that. Good. We can't always good. say that. Would you please say congratulations? Congratulations. <laughs> I said good. Congratulations. No incidents. I know you There is first. no such thing as an accident. Everything's preventable. So. <laughs> Jonathan. His eardrums are probably exploding back there as we, as we speak. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to pass out. Um, through that way. Don't pass out. Yeah. No. Um, the new budget calendar. Um, and uh, Karen and I have been working very hard uh, with the calendar, so we are just about um, on, on task. Um, we are the finance committee and I were going to meet right after this meeting for just a few minutes to talk through it. Uh, continue on tomorrow morning if we can, but I'll be ready uh, to, um, to deliver those um, to everybody by May 13th, uh, once the Finance Committee looks at it, we talk through it, um, so we are back on track, and uh, we are, um, we're, we're so far so good, and I'm uh, excited to have that conversation with them, um, and then um, Lastly, um, I wanted to share with you that Bruce uh, had, did have um, communications with the DBA uh, and has told them that it's time to uh, um, advertise for his replacement and he is uh, going to be complete. So that gives DBA six weeks to actually uh, be active and talking about how they want to go about with their director and what they're going to do with that particular position. So I wanted to share that with you. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Any questions, Pete, on the next manager's report? All right. Uh, and lastly, we do need to go into executive session for personnel matters. So, uh, so if I could have a motion uh, uh, with, to that regard to go into executive session. So move. For the second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Ms. Hackock. 